to Jersey Shore Online Learning. I am Linda Sparth. I know I know many of us in the district. I've been an elementary school teacher for 10 years. So I was a teacher at Avis for a few years and then most recently Sally Sparth. So uh, I came to take over the Jersey Shore Online Learning Program. So I'm going to kind of be your in-between person from the IU taking care of your curriculum and then the school district. And then Julie Williams, which many of you have met, is our secretary. So between the two of us, we'll be your point of contact throughout the year. Um, as you're probably aware, the Jersey Shore Online Learning Program is um, in conjunction with um, our IU. So we purchase our curriculum through vendors um, for elementary, middle school, and high school. So the curriculum that your child is getting is not necessarily the same curriculum that they would be getting in school. They'll still be learning the same standards and concepts, just maybe, you know, at different points throughout the year. Um, but, you know, still fulfilling their educational requirements. The benefits of Jersey Shore Online Learning um, is that students are still Jersey Shore Area School District students, so they can come in for different events. Um, I know we have picture day dates coming soon that we'll send to you. Um, you know, clubs, athletics, as they get older, so they can participate in. They have a student iPad, which I know we have an iPad insurance form, and we've all filled those out. Highly qualified teachers in their field through Edmentum, which is the curriculum we're going to use this year. And the most unique part of it is that you can access your courses 24-7, seven days a week. So it supports your child's learning styles, you know, what works best for your family. Food service this year, before we dive into curriculum, um, students in school and in the online program have the option to eat for free this year, um, but the only change with the online is that they need to order the day before. So if you know that your child wants to order a meal, they can order breakfast or lunch, but just make sure that you email our food service director before the end of like the school day. So I would say before like 2 o'clock. Um, to order your meal for the next day. There's pink forms over there on the side, so if you're interested in that, it kind of walks you through the whole process. You'll just send her an email of what you're picking for that day. The menu choices are online. Um, it looks like an orange slice, I think, on the website. You can just click on it, access the menu, and then you can pick whichever building in our district that you want to take your meal on. This is probably the only main thing that has changed this year in Jersey Shore Online. So here's what we're going to do is, like we said, you have a unique opportunity that you can access your coursework seven days a week. I think you have it well, well, you have until Sunday night at 11.59 to submit assignments. So if it works better for your family to work in the evening, you know, you have the option to do that. Um, what we will do is every Monday morning for the first day of that school week, we will check your child's um, progress from the prior week. So as long as they are not failing any subjects and they are not behind. You may remember from last year there was like a graph, like a bar graph that would show their grade and it would show their pacing. So as long as they're on track, um, they won't be marked, you know, not attending. And essentially, you know, we won't have to make any contact. Um, for that week. In the event that they are behind or failing, um, we will take a look at the week before and any day that they were not online for at least 30 minutes, then they'll be marked as absent for that day. Um, if they are behind or failing, we are going to implement this year that there's going to be a help or we call it an SOF for sessions offering support for students to come into their home building. So if your child would go to Jersey Shore Elementary School, they would come into Jersey Shore Elementary School on Thursday, will be our elementary day. So they would come in on Thursday and they would work with me basically just, you know, to get them on track. If they're struggling in a content area, you know, my, my GM is elementary school, so I should be able to help them and get them back on track. In the event that your child was absent, so if, you know, you know that, oh my goodness, you know, we have a doctor's appointment or whatever it might be, you can submit an excuse. Now, I would recommend submitting it as soon as you know that they're absent, just, you know, to be safe. But um, we will notify you, like I said, on Monday of your child's absence. So you have three days from when we notify you to submit an excuse. And I will show you this on our website. 
if you go to Jersey Shore website and in the upper right hand corner you can select your school from a drop down there is Jersey Shore online learning as a choice and on every single page um, this button is there and you can just click on that green button and an email um, will pop up and you can just type that email and it will come directly to us here so you don't have to like mailing anything in or if you're calling you know that should be a really easy option how will you and your child know if they're on pace? Um, our platform is similar to Genius this year. I said elementary switching to ed but it's going to look almost identical, just a little bit more user friendly for younger learners. So when they go in there, um, they can look at each of their courses and it will display, you know, the start and the end date. Um, and then there will be pacing. Pacing will indicate if the child is ahead or if they're behind. Um, and then, you know, you can also look at, I believe it's called student activity. There's a student activity tab, and it shows you, it actually keeps an account of how much time, one, that they logged on each day in each course, but then also um, the total for the week. So you probably also remember from last year, we don't have to worry about this as much at elementary, but if they're up, like they have their, you know, math course up, but they're secretly watching a YouTube video, it's not going to track that they are actively working in their course. So they have to actively be, you know, working. There's some little mini quizzes or little checks for understanding that they have to do. But basically, it's just showing that they are fully engaged and working in their curriculum. Um, we'll talk about that yellow highlighted section later, but it's just something I like to um, really remind everyone of is the grade that is posted on the bubble. And we'll see this much more clearly later. But if you pull up the dashboard, it will show you like ELA, English Language Arts. And it might be like even next week, you'll only be in the course for three days, let's say. You might check that and say, oh my goodness, my child has 95. Um, and they only submitted four assignments. So the grade is actually reflecting the assignments that they have submitted. So if they would stop working next week on Wednesday and didn't do any more work the rest of the uh, course, they wouldn't have a 95. Zeros, right, would be averaged into any classes or any assignments that they didn't have completed already. So just kind of keep aware of that. Their grade is reflecting what they've completed, not the full grade for the course. We did talk about the SOS or um, sessions offered before. Those are mainly if your child is behind or failing any courses, they're going to be required to come in. But, you know, you can also take advantage of these as online families saying, you know, my child's really struggling in second grade math. Could they come in and get some support? Absolutely. Right? You have that option. So, like I said, elementary days will be primarily on Thursday this year, but, you know, we can always make arrangements as it works best for you and your family. So, um, what I remind you is they have that option to come in for almost like tutoring or support, not necessarily for the Grades, um, elementary school grades are a little bit different than if they would be in person learning. Um, they're not going to get a marked period grade. So it's going to get a report card grade every nine weeks. In elementary school online, it's a semester based. So it's two 20 week semesters. Uh, we will still make contact, you know, if not weekly, certainly quarterly. So you should be well aware of the progress that your child is making, and you know, we will definitely touch base and give you a report at the end of each marking period. Um, you just won't get a report card four times throughout the year. Um, and grades, we'll probably get to once check your grades. So I said it's I believe last year you had accelerate education, and um, we decided as a district to change to Adventum. Um, we've heard that it's a lot more um, user friendly, especially for our younger learners. Um, so hopefully we'll see great success with that. The philosophy of Adventum is to actively engage students in, students in progress and project based learning. It allows them to demonstrate mastery, and they're basically applying what they're learning to real world. Situation. So they follow a PLUS acronym. So P stands for project, L stands for learn, U is use, and S is show. So um, some of the lessons will incorporate all of these different components. They might not have all of them 
you know, in each unit, but they certainly will have some of them. So some of them, they are, you know, going to show what they're learning. They're going to um, implement what they're learning to create something. And then other times it may just be reading or watching videos. Like, they can participate in that. Um, the only thing I did want to remind you of is last year when you went to Jersey Shore Online Learning, there was the login um, box. There's actually two separate ones now. <laughs> so I'll show you how to do that. But there is a bubble for high school, middle school students, which we obviously don't want to click on. And then at the bottom, it does say right there, but just to refresh your memory, it says elementary, log in to elementary. You're going to actually click on an orange link, and it's going to take you on there. So if you're trying to type your username and password into that top bubble and it's not working, it may be because you are trying to log into a high school classroom. Um, student tips. So just, you know, to review with your children, have a quiet, organized space to learn. You know, you don't want them waking up in the morning and laying in bed trying to do their coursework. You know, they are at home. I know they're in a comfortable learning environment, but we, you don't want them to treat it as much as, like, school or in an office space as they can. So have a clear, you know, clear off space, table, desk, whatever you have available to them that they can be actively engaged in their learning. Um, they should be logging into their courses each day. You know, even if your child gets ahead, which is perfectly fine, too, um, if they get ahead in their coursework, we still would like them to get on, check, um, especially for the next two bullets there. They're going to have to kind of monitor their course email as well as their district email. And that's where you come in as parents because I know, especially being an elementary teacher myself, that's not a skill that we teach our young learners, right? Checking their email, communicating by email. But it is kind of their primary way of communicating and talking with their teachers. So um, the course email, that's where they're going to get special like notifications from their teachers. They also get feedback. So like, if they handed in a project and it's a positive response, you know, in school, you know, your children will be getting an awesome job on your math test, whatever. They're not going to get to see that so, or hear that as often. So make sure that you get on, show them any feedback from their teacher. You know, they may also say, you know, reminder, you know, quiz on Tuesday, just to kind of keep yourself up to date. But then also the Jersey Shore Area School District email, we will be using that email platform as well, just for like important reminders, like I said, with picture day coming up, um, the uh, third graders will be required to come in and take their PSSA test later toward the end of the year. Just different things that come up, you know, as reminders in the marking period. So just make sure that they're actively checking their course and district email. Um, Ed Mentum has live lessons um, every day, I believe Monday through Thursday. So they kind of left Friday as a way to like catch up or do any progress um, or project-based learning. But Monday through Thursday, they do have live lessons. And as an elementary teacher, I would really encourage you to try to get on and do those live lessons as often as possible because that's almost the only like interaction that they will have face-to-face -face with their teacher. So they will, the teacher will have that um, scheduled on their site, and they will tell you when their times are. So they will be a specific time, like English language art time be from 9 to 10, math time be from, you know, 1 to 2, whatever um, is for that teacher. But I would really encourage you to take advantage of those live lessons as much as possible. Um, if you have any questions about the actual course or assignment, it's important that you email the teacher. Because I don't have really direct access to the, the content that they're teaching. I can communicate with them, and I can log in and see what your student is seeing. But as far as, like, you don't understand a grade or an assignment, that's where you really want to email the teacher. Um, and they can also set up tutoring sessions for you, too. Um, one cool thing that I noticed on there was they have office hours or times that you can call the teacher for help at any time, but then they also have almost reminds me of like if you call the doctor's office and it's after hours, right? They may refer you to another pediatrician um, similar to this. So if you call and it's not within your math teacher's office hours, someone from the helpline will pick up and they can still help you with your math class. So that's another great thing to take advantage of. And then I always remind our students, I know we have some younger ones who may not have learned our bar tools, but in our elementary schools we do follow bar which is our acronym for be respectful, act responsibly, remember safety, and keep on learning. So making sure, you know, that they are representing our school district in a positive light, knowledge, and expectations, being respectful. 
you know, to their online features and then the program as well. Parent tips, and I also put on there parent and adult coach, learning coach tips, because being a parent of an online learner, you are basically agreeing to not necessarily be their teacher, but you really are their learning coach. Um, at elementary specifically, you know, to be perfectly honest, they are going to need help. They are going to need your support uploading their work and checking their email because they're not typical skills that we teach our elementary kids right off the bat. So they are going to need your support um, coaching them along the way. Um, transitional help checks, checking their email, responding to their teachers, providing an organized space, <clears throat> monitoring their assignments and pace. That is really difficult <laughs> for students to check um, that bar graph. So just helping make sure that they're on pace, they're passing everything, and of course, spinning these students. iPad insurance, there are extra forms here on the side. If you didn't get one already, so I highly recommend you take advantage of our iPad insurance. Um, it kind of protects you from any damage to your district device. You can see the prices there. Um, and they can be a check or money order made out to your insurance agency. And um, the other form that we didn't get is the handbook. So we'll have to put that in. But the handbook just kind of reviews all of the new protocols for this year. Um, you can also access the handbook at any time online on our website. It goes across chapters, but it specifically says handbook is a printable version, so you have access to that at any time. Um, and then the handbooks can just be handed in the full book bin, the last page of that. Um, one last part to remind you is the first day of school. Thank you. I know the Jersey Shore area school district technically starts this Thursday, the 26th. Jersey Shore online students are not actually going to begin until Monday, the 30th. That's just because it flows better on the um, online calendar. It makes it kind of easy to start on a Thursday. So for the 26th and the 27th, I would really urge you to, you know, make sure you have school supplies that they're going to need. Make sure that they have an organized space. You know, make it fun. Get them in an area that's their own to learn. Um, another great thing to do could be to go through, make sure they have all their courses in there, um, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Make sure that they are all on there. They may not, they won't be able to access any coursework until Monday. So I know a couple of people said, well, can we start early? Which is great. They won't be able to, though. They won't be able to actually start their coursework, but I believe they can still, like, email their teacher, like, hi, you know, my name is Sally. I'll be in your math class this year. And they can just get a response back to me. Um, daily class schedule. This is what Ed Mentum suggests for daily time for success. Um, exact path, which I will talk about a little bit more. This is extra in addition to all the courses that your child is going to have. So exact path is a diagnostic test. And what it does is your child is going to get, it's a test. It's not a graded test, but this is great for online learners because what it does is it gives them this test to kind of dive into where they are academically and gear to the benchmark. So if your child is kind of um, has some gaps maybe in any of the core content areas, what it's going to do is it's going to put them on a path to hopefully close those gaps, right? So maybe I'm a really strong math student, but in some of the content areas in English and language arts, I need a little bit of support. So it's going to allow them to maybe stay on grade level or accelerate in areas that they're really strong but in any content areas that they need support, it just puts them on their level and then gives them activities that are really cute, like really organized in a nice, engaging way, but it's going to give them activities and little quizzes to do to kind of hopefully fill those gaps. They'll be tested, I believe it's two to three times a year, so it's similar to in school. We do like a Dibbles math, we do star reading, Dibbles for reading to check fluency. They're going to get these diagnostic tests beginning, middle, and end of the year. And it's, it's really awesome to see because if they're doing that, I think they recommend 30 to 45 minutes a day. Um, and it picks up where they left off. So if you start, you stop, you go eat a snack, and you come back, it'll pick them up right where they were. Um, and if they do that each day, it's, you know, encouraged that they will.
um, ELA, 90 minutes per day, that's what our students do in school. And it may take 15 to 90 minutes per day. Obviously, lessons are going to vary um, throughout each unit. Science and social studies, the live lessons alter. So um, every other day. So Monday, there might be science. Tuesday, there might be social studies for live lessons. So they recommend 30 to 45 minutes per day. And then physical education is also 30 minutes per day. That's their only elective um, to start off the year. So definitely don't miss it too much. So it's about a total of four and a half to five hours. It is like a typical school day. Um, you know, you have the flexibility with online learning to work on it at a time that's best for you, for your family, and for your child. You can take breaks. You know, just so that you're scheduling it each day. I would, if I were you, make up a schedule that's going to work best for you, so that your child should be logging on. You know, each day and working on it for a specific amount of time. So it's a big time. You know, they're getting up at the same day. They're getting out of bed, they're eating breakfast, and they're starting almost like a school day, but after school. Okay, and we are going to explore Edmentum. I'm going to let you explore in a minute, but I'm just going to give you a really quick overview to just kind of show you what it looks like and where you will find it. So when you go to our district website, right up in the top, Select a school, and you're going to select Jersey Shore Online Learning. And this site is definitely under construction because so we're trying to make it as user friendly as we can and update as much information as we can. So it may change um, looks here and there throughout the year, but the tab will never change. So across the top, the third one in, you can see login, and then the fourth one there is handbook. The handbook is where I told you you can always access the PDF version if you need to print it, if you need to refer to it. The handbook is always there. We are probably most often using that on um, login tab to get onto your online form. Now, just a reminder, I did refer to this in the beginning, that top box, that's for high school and middle school students, which it says right there. So down below, where it says elementary admins and login, you're going to click on that orange link. I would recommend saving that or putting that in your, you know, favorite toolbar just so that you're popping up to that each day. Now, I'm not going to log in as a student. I'm going to log in as a demo student, so it's going to look just a little bit different um, for my view. Now, if you look on mine, I think it says I'm enrolled in 48 courses. You will not be enrolled in 48 courses. You'll be in six. Okay, so each of your um, children will have exact tasks, which is that diagnostic test. So they won't have a grade in that class. That's more or less just something that they can work on to supplement their learning in um, Grammar, reading, and math. So it has three different areas just to supplement their learning. That'll just show their progress with that. Again, they won't be in grade. Um, they won't get behind or ahead. It's just something that we really encourage you to have your child work on. They can do that independently, too. So that would be a great thing for them to work on independently or quiet time. Um, they'll have English language arts. They will have math, science, and social studies, which will alter every other day. And then they'll have their physical education. So when theirs pops up, they will only see boxes for those six courses that they're enrolled in. Uh, and at the bottom of each one, it says launch. On the left-hand side, they're pretty self-explanatory, but if you look there, course information, that's just going to show you each course that you're logged into. <laughs>
It shows you every single part. It shows you every single thing again. A reminder that it's showing you the grade of completed assignments. So if you only completed four assignments and they got, you know, 90s on all of them as assignments, then that should just be fine if they didn't dive on. And in any assignment for the rest of the harm period, every other assignment would be zero. So it is just a reflection of what they've completed. Student activity. Um, that's where I showed you, you can select start date and end date. So if you wanted to look back at a specific week, so if we called you on a Monday um, and we were referring to the previous week's attendance, you can just select that date. Or you can look at every single course across the top there, and it shows you for each course how much time they spent on that each day. And at the very bottom, you know, if they blew a grand total for, for the week or that selected amount of time, how much time they spent on each um, view transcript, I'm not going to click on that because it looks totally crazy because there's a whole bunch of courses in here, but that would look most like a report card. Student information, if you needed to update that at any time or change any information, that's where, you know, just the basic student information, your contact information in there. Um, I think I did send an email, should have gone to parents because I set up an account for you as well. So you should have a password and a username, and then your child will have one. So you can log in as well. But if you do need to change that, that information is more important. Messages. Messages is where they're going to see any emails or any communication from any of their teachers. And if you need to send one, you can do it through messages. School calendar. That just shows our school calendar will be in there. So any days off or holidays will be in there. And then external links, I'll just show that to you now so I don't have to mess with the passwords again. But parents, yours is going to look exactly the same. Um, the only difference is, you know, it'll have different external links. So the external links on there at the very bottom, the one halfway down where it says student and family resources K to buy, you can click in there and you can go to um, your child's grade level. And it has a whole bunch of different has a bunch of different resources in there. I'll pull that up. But once, if you go in there, it has a whole bunch of resources like videos, how to videos, how to access different things, how to upload PDFs if you have to. Um, it gives you extra ideas for lessons to support your learner, different supplemental activities that you should do at home. So that's a really good one if you need to go back to like PowerPoint. Um, let me just go back to our course information here, and let's just say, oh, so if I go, let me go to my dashboard here. So let's say that I want to launch this course. So this is my student. I can launch this course. And this is what it will look like each day. So on the left-hand side, you can see all of their classes. So if you move here, this would be a first grade student. So first grade, ELA, they have health, math, science, and social studies. So on the left hand side, that lists, uh, lists their courses. And then across the top are the days. So that's your five days. You just click on those. Those are the different activities that they need to complete that day. Now, once they've completed it and they're done, you can see the green bar across the top shows you. If you look at the second one down under health, it looks like day three, they haven't completed those. They don't have that day four. So that'll be a good way for you to check their case and see if they've completed everything for each day for each of their courses. Okay? Uh, at the very top, if you see the bell with a little number two, it almost reminds me of like a social media like Facebook look too. So if they click on that bell, they can also see on there like that process that I was telling you about. Positive feedback from their teacher as well as any, you know, information. So um, the first one says that their work for big ideas has been um, random retake. So that means they maybe needed to retake the quiz or they didn't get a score that they wanted. I think you have three chances to retake the quiz. So um, that's where they would get access to click on that. Halfway down, it says, like, if they get a grade for any of their assignments, that's where they can check any of their grades that they got, or um, that anything was submitted. Okay, so what I am going to let you do before.
before you leave, I am just going to make sure that you can sign in and you can access um, your student dashboard. Don't panic if the courses aren't on there because we don't start our online calendar until the 30th. So that card that says EdMentum on it, that's what they're going to use um, to log into their event. Does anyone have any questions that you can think of? I'm sure some will come up as we get into the next slide. Oh, just like I said, please at any time feel free if you're unsure, you know, that, that composition and online learning that we can answer the question. Help. If I can answer the question or if it's something for um, you know, a teacher, I can definitely steer you in the right direction. 